Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 13th day of January, and it is Saturday, and we are in the year 2024, and today's topic is titled, Why Finish Strong? Good question. Yesterday we had the first part of this. It was titled, How Can I Finish Strong? And uh, both of these uh, devotional messages are from Brother Guy Goodall, and he has gone to be with the Lord. But he was a pastor of... Um, uh, what, um, he was a pastor of, where is he, a Bible Baptist Church in Hudson Falls, New York. So um, he is the author again for today's uh, topic as we get into the second part of this. So, amen. All right, before we get started on all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior today. And he wants to be. He doesn't want any to perish, but to all that come to repentance and to put your faith and trust in him. And he will be glad to wash away all your sin and give you eternal life. And then you can have a Christ-like life as you desire to do so and be pleasing to him and have a good, solid relationship with the Lord each and every day. And be thankful as the Daily Strength the Devotional has been talking about this week and then the next two weeks be uh, going through more on Thanksgiving. So... Amen. All right, so we're going to get started with the scripture song today, and it's from John 14, 1 through 3, and <clears throat> so let's go ahead and this is Jesus speaking here in these first three verses, and so let's go ahead and press play and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. <clears throat> John 14, 1 through 3. Let, Let not, not your heart, heart be troubled. Be Ye believe, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. That's right. <clears throat> not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. Believe also in me. Believe also in me. Praise the Lord. So let's uh, trust the Lord. And uh, amen. All right. So put that aside. And let's go ahead and I wanted to get some more of uh, what Jesus is saying here in uh, John chapter 14. After he talks about uh, uh, preparing a place for us. And that uh, if you're saved, you can go be in that place with the uh, Lord. So that's John 14. Let's go there and uh, read the rest of this here. So, 
and 14 and we have the first three verses and then in verse 4 um, he continues on he says and whither I go ye know and the way ye know and then Thomas uh, saith unto him Lord we know not whither thou goest and Jesus has been telling them these things uh, ever since he came and um, started telling them that he had to go to the cross and he had to go away and it would be back and so Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we note the way? And then Jesus saith here uh, unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And that's right, no man come to, uh, G uh, to God the Father but by Jesus. And in verse 7 he says, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Shew us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, uh, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And uh, then he continues on there and says, If ye keep my, if ye love me, keep my commandments, and so on and so forth. So, and then um, talks about the Comforter coming, which the, that's the Holy Spirit. And so, I encourage you to read the rest of that on your own time. So that was uh, some extra there for you. All right, so we'll do those scripture songs again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic. Uh, the second of this two-part topic here uh, from yesterday. This is the second part, and it's titled, Why Finish Strong for this 13th day of January 2024. And Brother Goodall writes here, um, let me read you the passage here first, and we read this yesterday, and encourage you to go back and read all of Second Timothy chapter 4 again. Um, and this is verse 7, it says, I have fought a good fight. This is Paul speaking. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7, and Brother Goodall writes, he says, Paul was pleasing God when he wrote our text today. Amen. Dr. Lee Robertson uh, used to tell us, quitters are a dime a dozen. Don't you quit, <laughs> right? Uh, there are numerous reasons we should finish strong. He writes in big, bold letters. So let's uh, finish strong. And here's the reason. So there's a... Uh, uh, three reasons here. Uh, first uh, is finishing strong pleases God, and that's the most important thing, that we please the Lord and not man, but be pleasing the Lord. So finish, uh, first finishing strong pleases God. In John eight twenty nine, Jesus said, For I do always the, those things that please him, and he's the only one that really can. And we uh, try to please the Lord as best we can while we're in this body of flesh and have that desire to do so. And so... Continue on, the Apostle Paul advised us uh, not to please men, and that's Galatians 1.10, the reference there. In 1 Thessalonians 4.1, he said to walk and to please God. Second, finishing strong encourages others in the faith. And he writes and says, I have uh, never been blessed by those who were unfaithful in the Lord's work. In Romans 14.19, Paul said we should let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. In Romans 15:1-2, he advises sh uh, shouldering the infirmities of the weak rather than pleasing oneself. So, all right, so let's uh, learn to do that more. And then third and final says third, finishing strong develops us personally in English class while in college. Professor uh, Rudy Wagner used to say, Young people grow spiritually until you die. 
in 1 Peter uh, 4, 12-14, the writer Peter recommends that the partakers of Christ's sufferings or suffering are headed for the spirit of glory and of God resting upon them. The songwriter said, It will be worth it all when we see Christ. Oh, and another wrote, The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Hallelujah for that. So let's uh, um, take heed to these three things. Again, um, that uh, there are numerous reasons we should finish strong. And here's three of them. Again, first, uh, finishing strong pleases God. And second, uh, finishing strong encourages others in the faith. And then third, finishing strong develops us personally. So those are the three points there. And then the references in the middle there for each one of them. So if you like to take notes, you can go back and um, listen to this and get the notes there and the references. So amen for that. All right, so that was a good uh, topic for today. So let's uh, finish strong. It's good to start strong, but it's even better to finish strong and finish our course. So all right, so that was a good topic there for today. And now let's get into the Daily Strength Volume 1 book by Douglas D. Stauffer and Andrew B. Ray as we conclude this first week on Thanksgiving, week 49. And today is Saturday, day 343, uh, titled, Let the Redeemed of the Lord Say So. And Psalm 107, verses 1 through 2, uh, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And so let's look at uh, Psalm 107 really quick to see who wrote this. And so let's see, Psalm what is it, 107. Right, so Psalm 107. Let me go here. All right, so Psalm 107. Let's see. All right, so... Um, there is no author for Psalm 107, but I uh, encourage you to read the entirety of this psalm. And it's got uh, 43 verses here. So again, um, those first two verses say, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And then verse 3 says, And gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north, and from the south. And so, amen. All right. That's the um, rest of that verse there. Finish it up. Okay, so now let's get into the introductory thoughts. It says, Many believers are familiar with the phrase, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, right? We sure are. And it says, But far too few, few consider it immediate context in Scripture. As the Lord's children, we are to say so. But what are are we to be saying? Good question. So what should we be saying? Uh, believers are to offer thanks to the Lord and continually speak of his goodness and mercy. That's a good thing to do. Oftentimes, the Bible admonishes God's people to give thanks unto God for his mercy, especially those who have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Psalm 107 verse 2, which we just read. We also need to give thanks to God because of his redeeming mercy. Psalm 136, verses 1 through, uh, 1 through 3, and then verse 26. And we'll read those in a minute. Uh, one who is redeemed can best say so by giving God thanks. Let others know you are not ashamed to belong to God and that you are truly grateful for his working in your life. So let's do that. And give thanks to the Lord more, as we've been talking about all week. And so Psalm 136, let's look at this psalm really quick, these verses here. So Psalm 136, all right, and verses 1 through 3 say this. I'm no, no uh, particular writer for this one. So it says here in verses 1 through 3, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. And let's see here. Uh, so there's 26, and it keeps on going uh, down here uh, through the uh, verses here. And I encourage you to read all of these here. And it keeps ta telling all these different things. 
um, um, here. And then um, the second part always says, For his mercy endureth forever. And then verse 26, the final verse here, it says, Oh, give thanks unto God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. So, um, good psalm here. And so, I encourage you to read that entire psalm there. And uh, amen. All right. So now devotional thoughts. It says, for children, God gave us his best gift, even or ever because it lasts forever. That's right. So eternal life lasts forever because it's eternal. He gave us his son. Amen. Jesus died on the cross so that we could have the free gift of salvation. Have you ever said thank you for this wonderful gift? Second Corinthians 9.15 so we should th say thank you for that gift, gift of eternal life. And so let's look at 2 Corinthians 9, verse 15. Read this passage here really quick. So 2 Corinthians 9, and verse 15. All right, so 9, 15 says, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Hallelujah. So... All right, so that was for the children, and you can apply that to everyone. And now for uh, devotional thoughts for everyone. It says, how often do you spend time giving thanks to the Lord? Do you let others know how good God has been to you? Or do you find yourself ashamed of him? Oh, hopefully not. And those times we find ourselves ashamed of him, we shouldn't be ashamed of him. And uh, do the first thing. All right, now uh, continuing on, it says, for what? Could you give God thanks? Uh, has he redeemed you from the hand of the enemy? Has he provided for your needs? Has he blessed you by answering prayers? Has he worked in your life? Uh, all those should be yes. So giving thanks for those things. Now for prayer thoughts. It says ask the Lord to help you verbally give thanks to him. And then the second prayer thought says thank, thank the Lord for his goodness and mercy. And hymn from the book is titled Rejoice, the Lord is King. So we'll sing that hymn along with the other one here in a few minutes. Uh, but now let me read the quotes from the next volume. Volume 2, week 49, subject is warfare. So we have two quotes here. First one says, The fact that the Bible describes the Christian life as the good fight of faith, 1 Timothy 6.12, reveals that the believer's warfare is spiritual and not fleshly. And then the second quote says, Dedicated soldiers are a dying breed, especially amongst Christians. This is why so many people quit when the going gets tough or obstacles uh, surface. The average Christian believes that God's will involves no hurdles. But that's not true. God didn't say that we were going to be comfortable in this life as we're going through and serving Him and living for Him. That there's going to be times of trials and tribulations and persecutions and all that stuff so don't quit don't quit don't quit as uh is uh talking about in the baptist bread devotional so let's uh look at first timothy six twelve here uh, for this topic on warfare so first timothy let's go to first timothy here and uh chapter six verse twelve so first timothy six twelve and let's see here all right, it says in verse 12, um, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So, let's fight that good fight of faith, and lay hold on eternal life, and all that, and not to quit. So, all right, so that is the end of the first week on Thanksgiving, and tomorrow we'll go over the introductory stuff on Week 50, which is Thanksgiving Continued, this will be the second week, and we'll go over the incurrences and the first usage in the New Testament, last usage in the Old Testament, the interesting fact about it, Bible study tip, and then we'll go through the week, and then tomorrow is a church uh, day, so no uh, topic for tomorrow, so we'll do some more fight on stories, and I'll give you those titles here in a um, little bit, and so tomorrow will be day 344, church day, and the uh, passage will be from Psalm 107 verse 21 and 22 so um that psalm again for tomorrow and so we'll put that aside for right now we'll get into the hymns and sing these hymns and then do the scripture songs again 
So let me get this first hymn here. All right, so this first hymn is titled Seeking the Lost. And this is hymn 619 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual, Song, Spiritual Songs book. And this is another one of the wit these witnesses of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song. Again, titled Seeking the Lost, written by William A. Og Ogden. And he lived from 1841 to 1897. And there is a story here about uh, him. So, let me uh, press play and we'll sing along here with this hymn. So, here we go. Seeking the lost, yes, kindly entreating wanderers on the mountain astray. Come unto me, his message repeating words of the Master speaking today. Going afar upon the mountain, bringing the wanderer back again, back again into the fold. Of my Redeemer, Jesus the Lamb, for sinners slain, for sinners slain. Seeking the lost and pointing to Jesus, souls that are weak and hearts that are sore, leading them forth in ways of salvation. Showing the path to life evermore. Going afar, going afar, on the mountain, on the mountain, bringing the one, bringing the wanderer back again, back again, into the fold, into the fold, my Redeemer, my Redeemer, Jesus the Lamb, Jesus the Lamb, for sinner slain, for sinner slain. Thus would I go on missions of mercy, following Christ from day unto day, cheering the faint and raising the fallen, pointing the lost to Jesus the way. Going afar, going afar, on the mountain, upon the mountain, bringing the wanderer back again, back again, into the fold, into the fold, my Redeemer, my Redeemer, Jesus the Lamb, Jesus the Lamb, for sinner slain, for sinner slain. Amen. Good hymn there. That's a good one there. So that was the first hymn. So let me read you this story here at the bottom. It says here, uh, Professor Ogden enjoyed great distinction as a conductor and instructor of music. He taught across many of the states of the Union, as well as Canada, uh, we draw the following from him, uh, biographer uh, J. H. Hall, and this is what he says. In 1881, uh, he moved with his family to Toledo, Ohio, uh, where he did the greatest musical work of his life. In 1887, he was appointed superintendent of music in the public schools of Toledo, uh, which position he held until the time of his death, he enjoyed teaching the children more than any other work. Professor Ogden was very popular with the children, and his training of 3,000 children in 1894 was the distinct triumph of the great uh, uh, um, Sigger uh, Fest. Um, held in his home city, uh, Professor Ogden was a very genial and compassionable man. In short, he was a Christian and citizen of honor. 
He was very enthusiastic in his work, yet very gentlemanly and considerate. The funeral was said to be one of the largest ever seen in Toledo. He is gone, but his music and musical work will live and uh, go on doing good. Though the singer be forgotten, his songs will not die. And then write some parentheses. Uh, say, uh, say, uh, signature Fest is a, a singer festival, a public competition of singing groups. And that's spelled S-A-E-N-G-E-R. Singer Fest. So, good uh, little story there about this um, hymn writer here. And so now we give you the references and move on to the second hymn. So stanza one, we have Matthew uh, 18, 12, and then Matthew eleven twenty eight, and then Isaiah 52, 7. Stanza two is 2 Corinthians 5, 20, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and Romans, excuse me, Romans 10, 15. And then stanza three, we have Luke 9, 23, and John 14, 6, which we read a little bit ago. And then uh, Luke 15, 3 through 7, and John 1, 36 for the refrain. So good story there about uh, this man, uh, Ogden. And so now we'll go ahead and get to the first, uh, or the second hymn here, which is uh, titled Rejoice, the Lord is King. So we'll do this one here. So let's go back to uh, this hymn. So let me turn it down here just in case there's a... Uh, Let's see, trying to find the one that's the most lengthiest. So I guess it'd be this one here. All right, so just give me a minute so we can get through the ads. All right. Yep, let's turn this back up. Might have to. Do this a couple times. There's six stanzas here in the, this book, so I might have to do the instrumental a couple times. Um, so this is uh, hymn 294 uh, in the hymn book, and this is uh, one of these, the Resurrection of Christ hymns, a hymn, Re Rejoice the Lord is King, by Charles Wesley, who lived from 1707 to 1788, and then John uh, Dar Darwall, 1732 to 1789. So and then there's a story down here at the bottom. So let me turn this screen back on here. And we'll do this here. So here we go. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. Jesus the Savior reigns, the God of truth and love. When he had purged our stains, he took his seat above. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. His kingdom cannot fail, he rules over earth and heaven. The keys of death and hell are to our Jesus given. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, Rejoice! He sits at God's right hand Till all his foes submit And bow to his command And fall beneath his feet 
Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. Alright. Those last two. He all his foes shall quell, shall all our sins destroy, and every bosom swell with pure seraphic joy. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, Rejoice, rejoice in glorious hope, Jesus the Judge shall come, and take his servants up to their eternal home. We soon shall hear the archangel's voice, the trump of God shall sound, rejoice, amen, so that's the hymn there, praise the Lord, good hymn, so, alright, let me put that back up there, and we'll read the story here, at the bottom, so here's the story for this hymn, it says in uh, the 1740s, a visible ministry to thousands experienced severe opposition from foes. On one occasion, an angry physician uh, brutishly uh, demanded an apology for the accusation of being a Pharisee. The fourth uh, right Wesley responded, I still insist you are a Pharisee. My commission is to show you your sins, and I shall make no apology for so doing, the doctor retorted by striking Wesley with his cane. <laughs> On another occasion, his diary r records, I had just named my text when an army of rebels broke in upon us, threatening to murder the people if they did not go out. They broke the, uh, scone, uh, scone, go, the sconces, uh, dashed the windows in pieces, tore away the shutters. I stood silently, uh, looking on, but mine eyes were unto the Lord. Then uh, they lifted up their hands and clubs to strike me, but a stronger arm resisted them, or restrained them, excuse me, restrained them. Uh, he said, uh, for those dark, uh, or in these dark hours, Charles found triumph penning uh, then the lines of victory, rejoicing, the Lord is king, your Lord and king of door. Uh, alternate tune, the um, tune is Handel's 148th, uh, number 194 in the hymn book. So that is the other uh, hymn there, uh, hymn 194. So let's see, 194 really quick here. 194. I want to see this one really quick. So this is uh, the other one. Let's see. Oh, well, nope, that's not it. So anyway, um, so that's uh, the story there at the bottom. And now let me give you the references. So uh, stanza one, we have Psalm 47, 1 through 2, Psalm 35, 18, and Philippians 4, 4. Stanza two is John 1, 17, Hebrews 1, 3. First Thessalonians 5.16, stanza 3 is Daniel 2.44, Revelation 1.18, Romans 15.10, stanza uh, 4 is Hebrews 10.12, Psalm 110.1, and First Peter uh, 1.8, stanza 5 is uh, Psalm 45.6-7, Psalm 35.9, and Isaiah 40.9, and then stanza uh, 6 is Titus 2.13, 1 Thessalonians 4.17, and 1 Thessalonians 4.16. So that is the end of the second hymn for today. And so put that 
aside and we'll do the scripture songs again one more time and then wrap it up after that. So, all right, here we go. Nope, we're going to turn the power back on. Okay, so we're going to do yesterday's, which was from 2 Samuel 22, 2-4, two and then today's, John 14, 1-3, and Jesus speaking here today in this uh, particular scripture song, in this passage here. So, all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's go to yesterday, is the 12th. This one, all right, here we go. Second Samuel 22, 2 through 4. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, the God of my rock. In him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. All right, let's sing it out. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield, the horn of my salvation, my high tower, and my refuge, my Savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Now today's one more time. John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. All right, here we go. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there also let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me believe also in me Believe also in me. Praise the Lord. So, hope you've trusted Jesus as your Savior. And we shouldn't let our hearts be troubled because Jesus will come back for us again. So, um, keep our eyes and hearts and minds focused on Him at all times. So, praise the Lord. 
All right, so that's it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song. And this will be another um, hit, uh, scripture song from Psalms. And this is Psalms 56, verse 4, for the 14th, as we start a new week uh, tomorrow. And uh, so it says here, In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. So that's Psalm 56, 4. And most likely that's a Psalm of David. So we'll go over that Psalm tomorrow. And then the Baptist bread topic for tomorrow will be titled, How to Shine for God. And uh, the passage is Psalms uh, 91 to verse 1. So that's Psalm uh, for tomorrow topic, How to Shine for God. And tomorrow's author is TM. I believe that was the initials for Tom uh, Malone. So let's see, TM, yep, Tom Malone, and he's uh, deceased, Was uh, he lived in Pontiac, Michigan, but he's with the Lord now, so we'll read you his uh, um, devotional topic tomorrow, so that will be that, and the daily strength, um, no topic for tomorrow, so we'll go over all the introductory stuff for the second week of Thanksgiving, week 50, titled Thanksgiving Continued, and go over all the introductory stuff, and then again, tomorrow is day 344, Church Day, Psalm 107, verses 21 through 22 are the passages there. And then the Fight On Stories, uh, more Fight On Stories book here. Um, this is the cover of that book. And uh, I'll go over some stories tomorrow and read some stories for you. I'll read two of these. Um, they're a little lengthy, but uh, I'll do both of these. And the first one is titled The Captain, and that's on page 90 and 91. If you have a copy of the book and want to follow along and read along, with me and then the second one is titled Yankee Doodle is Ours 92 and 93 in the book for uh, pages 92 and 93 so those will be the two stories from the more fight on uh, stories book more amazing stories about those who have persevered through hardship and danger by Sam Gipp and these books are available on um, daystarpublishing.com is where you can find all his books so amen and then the hymn for tomorrow we'll only be doing one hymn but maybe we'll Pick another one out for a second hymn. So tomorrow's hymn is titled The Weep for the Lost. And this is hymn 620. We've already reached hymn 620. And this is another one of these Witness of the Saint hymns, a spiritual song. And there is no story for this one. But this is written by Nathaniel Culver, C-O-L-V-E-R. And um, then Lewis uh, Deverex, D-E-V-E-R. EUX unknown an unknown date uh, and then um, arranged by George Kingsley and they lived from 1811 to 1884 and then Nathaniel Culver lived from 1794 to 1870 so five stanzas here so we'll sing that one tomorrow for the hymn and then the book here this is the cover to it I know it's backwards on the screen but this is the cover to that book and uh, it's got many, many hymns in there. Many we know and many we don't. But we'll learn them as we go along. So that's that book. And then uh, the Daily Strength Volume 1 book. There's four volumes to this series of devotionals. And those are all available on MelodyPublications.com. There's the website there to order those if you want to get those or um, give them to as gifts. So good books to have. Amen. All right. And then the, da- uh, the Scripture Song book and CD should be available online at www dot daily scripture songs dot com that's brother dean and sister patty runyon's website missionaries to port kaituma guyana so pray for them and brother dean uh he's trying to get some surgery done um and uh sister patty will probably be back uh um, in the states here soon not sure when and just keep praying for them that they can continue their work in guyana and while they're gone that um the locals uh local brothers and sisters in christ over there will um, have a desire to keep the work going while they're back here in the states so pray for all that and um amen all right so that's uh that uh, www.dailyscripturesongs.com and then the baptist bread devotional book this is the cover from jan for january and february and uh that's available on baptistbread.com and www.timgreenministries.org are the websites you can order uh this uh book here get a subscription going and they come in boxes of 10, and you can keep one for yourself and hand the others out to others, or you can hand them all out, however you desire to do so, if you get a cop, um, box of that, if you want to subscribe to those. And then um, there's other books available on the second website there. And so then the Bible, 
the King James Bible. Uh, this is the Word of God, the first book you should always be getting into and reading it and studying it daily and uh, seeking God's face and going to Him in prayer and asking Him to guide us and direct us in all truth and to have a better relationship with Him and be more Christ-like each and every day as we desire to do so. And so this is a book we should always get into and the King James Bible. Amen. All right, and if you know somebody doesn't have Facebook, still got the YouTube channel going, and upload these uh, after I'm done doing them live on the uh, YouTube channel, and that's Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting, or W or or um, yeah, the um, Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting, or um, Baptist Bread Broadcast. Um, you can type that in if you can't look see find me the other way. Um, so that's that uh, YouTube channel, and many many um, um, Baptist Bread. Devotional topics um, going all the way back to 2018, I believe, is when I first started doing these. And then many other uh, um, videos up there of uh, different um, ministries and stuff we've done throughout the years. So little videos of that um, and from the Capital Steps uh, building trips and all that stuff. So And um, some music, uh, special music that are recorded that people have done, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ have done at Bible Baptist Church. So uh, you can check that all out at the YouTube channel. And then for the um, um, podcast, it's uh, God's Messenger Lighthouse Podcast. I've been reading different heroes of the Christian faith and missionary stories on that podcast there at Spotify or iHeartRadio. And reading through Brother James's book on the tire tracks. And you can find that book and many other books by Brother James um, by going to www.jameswnox.org or type in uh, store.jameswnox.org. And uh, go straight straight to the store um, part of the website. So, amen. All right. And also, I've uh, been reading uh, the devotional book. I've been doing a spe uh, special separate uh, broadcast pre-recorded for that uh, book on the um, commentary, uh, Christ Honoring Commentary Series book of uh, Genesis that Brother James writ uh, wrote many years ago. So, uh, you can check that out separately. And I post that up on both, both Facebook and YouTube. So... Praise the Lord for that book. Uh, little devotional studies in there. Um, uh, outlines and topics that he did through the um, book of Genesis. So you can check out that uh, special um, um, broadcast that I do separately. So amen. All right. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for watching. And may the Lord richly bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye for now.